The map design of Splatoon 3 can be a highly contested topic sometimes. For every person who likes a map, another will absolutely hate it. And typically, the haters will be a lot more vocal than the people who like the map. A prime example of this is Wahoo World, and although I agree with a lot of the hate the map gets, it's very clear that the hate is overblown. Some people are extremely vocal about their hate for a map because of one simple reason. They want the maps changed. And finally, the developers of Splatoon have listened. The only problem is that the way they went about these changes seemed like it was either rushed or they simply didn't care enough to properly fix the maps. Let's make a comparison to Team Fortress 2 for a moment. I'm sure you all know what TF2 is, or have at least heard of it, and some pretty handy comparisons can be made thanks to the community of the game and the primary map-making tool, Hammer. Their entire community is based around map-making, but for the purposes of this video, I'll be focusing on TF2Maps.net. What's important about TF2 Maps is that they run large group tests filled with community members from their Discord server who can join in and test maps from others that are currently in progress. Even some of the maps currently in their game got their start in that community. I'm bringing this up because one of the biggest taboos in map making is making a map out of props instead of out of world brushes. For example, it's making a route to mid look like this, rather than this. Now obviously this layout is far from perfect, and it's not always as exaggerated as this. But all the fences in the first half of the example make the map layout look more empty. Other times, props can make a map look cramped and cluttered. It all depends on the props and how they're used. It's very easy to fall into that trap and be quick to add those few props as a fix, but it really hurts the map's quality, especially when it doesn't fit the map's theme. A lot of people try to add props like this to fix sightlines or routing issues. Heck, I'm not even immune to that sometimes. Plenty of people can and have made that mistake, but looking back at Splatoon 3 now, you start to notice the same out-of-place additions which seem to nerf one sightline at a time, and even ones that practically weren't used by anyone. This is a huge problem. Making maps can be tough, but these fixes look like they were made by someone who just got into making maps. The developers look like they're trying to take the easy way out with a lot of these changes, and I can only hope this was just them being rushed from the DLC, other new maps, and specials already being added. But that's enough being negative. How can we actually fix this problem? There's actually a quick temporary solution to these problems for most of the maps that actually needed a change, like Mincemeat Metalworks. For example, these walls next to the Defender's side truck could be made inkable while they look into better routes or flanks that could be added. It's not a perfect fix, but it does make attacking that position a lot easier. Splat zones on Hagglefish Market and Wahoo World didn't need the changes to mid, they just needed better routes around it to flank the opponents. On Wahoo World, you can only flank one direction, and it's over glass, making you very vulnerable. While on Hagglefish Market, the left flank puts you at a height disadvantage, which to be fair, isn't impossible to overcome considering how fast it can be, but the right flank takes much, much longer and leaves you very visible and very vulnerable with a grade at the end of it. Both of these maps have more easy fixes that wouldn't take too long to implement. Hagglefish Market already has a fix to its problem on tower control, so just moving it to the zones version as well would make for a great change. As for Wahoo World, adding the arches back to each of the walls could make the map more interesting as well as giving players more options to flank. Eeltail Alley is one of the tougher maps to fix, but adding inkable walls on these left walls to most of the modes could be a quick fix for now, and could be very interesting if they added an uninkable surface below the walls as well, raising the risk of being spotted while taking the flank. Magomart never needed to change the sightline. The only problem was Crab Tank, which oppressed practically every route on the left side. It doesn't help that splash o -matic outputs it very quickly, but that's a separate issue entirely, and a topic for another video if I ever end up making it. The quick changes to Hammerhead Bridge and Mahi Mahi Resort are the only changes I somewhat agree with. It should be fine to leave them as they are for a short time, maybe the whole season, but none of these changes to any of the maps should be considered a replacement for a map redesign that adds more flanks and routes. Even the changes to both of those maps have their issues, like the left route still being nearly useless since you're unable to retreat. A defending sponge there could make players a lot more willing to use the route since they won't have to commit as much. 
Mahi Mahi just needs a redesign closer to the original, and just changing zones to have a sign won't change much about the map at all. All it does is change where backliners will stand by a few feet. Crab Tank and Explosher even ignore the sign entirely at no risk to the weapons themselves. Still alright for a quick patch, but definitely not a permanent solution. Just an editor's note, as I was making this video, the update fully dropped. The new maps are honestly some of the best so far, and Umami Ruins is probably one of the best maps in the game, at least in zones, because that's the only one I've been able to play it in so far. This leads me to believe the developers were just rushed on time and felt like they needed to change something about the old maps to respond to the community. Overall, I think the quality of the new map is definitely a good sign for the game's future. I really hope I'm jumping the gun here, and most of these polls and signs are just temporary fixes while we wait for a proper redesign of some of the maps. Because if not, this game could get a poll lot worse. Thanks for watching. Hey, congratulations on making it to the end of the video. It wouldn't have been possible without my friend Foz helping me gather footage. Their Twitch will be in the description. Make sure to like the video if you liked it, and who knows, I might make another video like this in the future. And again, thanks for watching.